Hello and welcome back everyone here to The Summit 2. It's the Chinese qualifiers brought to you by G2A.com. Make sure to go check them out. But not only have we gone a little behind, we've gone a little beyond the schedule as we have adjusted it slightly. I'll go... R I can't go back to that screen because I'll run the loop again. But looking at the schedule, uh, we switched the games. We've got Speed Gaming versus Tong Fu. That's the best of one right now. Uh, swaps it out, and then coming up next, it'll be DK versus LGD C deck. So which we we've we've changed it a bit, but hey, this is going to be a fantastic game as well. We get to see Speed Gaming again. We saw Tong Fu already have a pretty difficult time taking down LV Gaming in sort of the the second half of the game that we did show up to here when the stream went live, and of course that stream. Where else? twitchtv Beyond the Summit. Make sure to follow. Uh, but looking at the bands right now, we've got Terrorblade going to be taken out. Uh, we've got the Skywrath going to be taken out. So we got to see the Terrorblade last game, and well, it wasn't enough as DK did sort of just walk over the Terrorblade. Not that terrifying at all. Kong Fu bans out the Naga, another very illusion-based, radiance-based hero, and no Death Prophet. After that Death Prophet performance, I think both teams are like, we saw what DK did with it. We'll pass. Like, we don't know if we can replicate that because that was impressive, and we don't want to deal with it in case it's replicated. Uh, and they'll go further on to ban out the Morphling and the Witch Doctor. Looks like both teams were paying attention last game as sort of those bans look targeted towards what happened. But the picks we've got a first pick Razor, second pick Faceless Void right now, Four Speed Gaming, and Tong Fu. Meanwhile, uh, they're going to go ahead and pick up that Brewmaster first was banned out first in the last game. Brewmaster first and a Centaur War Runner after that. So they're ready to thunderclap and hoof stomp it up right now and take those mid-game team fights and maybe pull ahead pretty early on. But looking at the late game right now with the Razor and Faceless Void and the positional advantage that a Bat Rider with a lasso and a Force Staff can get you, well, you got to watch out for that. And Tong Fu, they look to be gearing towards this early game, mid-game, which can be risky and a little dangerous a little redundant uh, in 6.82 uh, as they do pick up the Lich. However, we didn't see a lot of this because, you know, the push was so strong. But let's not forget, Ice Armor works on towers. And with the slow push and the lacking, the lack of a, a little bit of a pushing lineup, Ice Armor onto the towers could be a really big deal. And I believe it was Tier 2 towers were given 5 more armor and... Obviously, the Fortify refreshing as well. Lich could be enough to, to stop the push, but I don't know if Speed Gaming got the memo, and if they did, they, they didn't care about it. They're not putting covers on their TPS reports, no matter what anybody says. Uh, Razor, potential to pick up the Ags, and of course, Shadow Shaman with the Serpent Wards. That's a lot of tower push. A big, strong right-click and attack speed from Faceless Void. Well, that's enough to get a tower. And then Bat Rider as well. Just, well, not going to help with the tower so much, but we'll secure it. Uh, flying up high in the sky with the Firefly, looking to get any pickoffs to, to make that a little bit easier. But some bans. It was Morphling and Io that Speed Gaming took out in the second phase. Witch Doctor and Ancient Apparition taken out by Tong Fu. And so far, the Ancient Apparition banned out in most games. I know the Chinese scene still likes a hero a little bit more. They they sure did at the, the middle and the tail end of 6.81, and I think they definitely still like it. A lot now as it has been touched upon about every game I, I didn't catch the first two games as i was i was still sleeping um as of course east coast here is still pretty early what time is it locally nine in the morning right now it was uh started up woke up at six for this there you go which is nothing honestly people casters man the main guys they work hard they don't sleep looking at pretty much zayori that dude Casting all the time. And Blaze as well, but of course Blaze uh, is now a father, so he's a little preoccupied. For those of you that are fans of, of Blaze casting, there, there you go. If you're wondering where he's been, that would explain it. Uh, taking care of his child. 
But anyway, I missed the bands. I, I digressed a little bit. It was Marana and Bane, the, the pickup for Tong Fu, so that's a lot of uh, pick-off potential. Lots of early kills, perhaps, along with the Lich. Some, some good burst damage. It'll be LPC supporting up there. He was that IO, and he played it well enough. He was very, very good with the uh, defensive relocates out of the Chrono. So I think Speed Gaming, they saw that uh, in the Tong Fu versus LV game, and will kind of maybe even respect ban out that Wisp, but... Talking about bounty runes and golden XP bounty changes and AoE when you're behind. And now we can be talking about that bounty hunter. So bounty hunter coming out looking for that uh, that AoE, I guess if you want to call it that, or rather just bouncing uh, shuriken toss. That's going to be sick. I've yet to see it really uh, happen in game. But, but here we go. We're in. We can introduce the teams. But before we do, I'll introduce myself and, and the tournament once more. I'm Helium, and as you can see there, at Heliumbrella in the top right corner, just solo casting this for you. And what is this, you might ask, if you're just joining here? It is the Summit 2, the Chinese qualifiers, brought to you by G2A.com. Make sure to get that bundle, compendium, ticket, all the goodies. It's awesome, and of course, don't forget about the chests as well uh, that you can buy and help support the Summit 2. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. As Here we go, the team, Speed Gaming in this best of one they're going to be on the dire we've got melody lovers on the shadow shaman a little bit ahead of him it will be uh just the faceless void i think that is rain i'm unsure though but faceless void we've got mzr over on the bat rider it'll be lwy or seven magic here on the bounty hunter uh, look for him to track things up and try to get as much as possible in this off lane it's it's gonna be hard the kill potential of a bane marana is pretty much unsurpassed in the early game it's very very good and if bounty hunter finds himself alone which it doesn't look like he will mzr i think is going to be joining him for a brief time here in in the off lane as we've already seen them duo off lane once or at least dk did earlier as uh, marana will get the bounty rune and oh he's gonna get dusted up and now he's gonna get slapped arrow coming in easy to connect gonna be about a four second stun with that one and the right clicks here should be enough dust just wearing off but he's not gonna have the time and it'll be another early first blood to start off this game and with that we'll start introducing tong fu it was a xiao love on the marana here that did pick up that first blood introducing them in reverse order we've got yu 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 nine on the brewmaster in the middle lane will not be having too fun of a time against the razor but if he wants to have a little bit more fun of course, you gotta get drunk to have have a little bit more fun. He's gonna probably want to put an early point, a value point, if I can borrow the expression here, in that drunken haze. Bottom lane, we've got MZR in some trouble here. Another arrow combo likely here to have started that off, and it will be another kill for Xiao Love. Bounty Hunter, though, will pick up the Bane and might be able to pick up another here. If that creep dies, he'll get level 2. No, keep chasing! You would have had the Shuriken Toss. Oh, would have been maybe just enough with the damage mitigation. It was 100, Marana was at like 90. It could have been close, but anyways, back to mid. It's uh, UUU9 on the brew. I hope to see an early point in Drunken Haze. It won't stop the static link, but it'll at least stop him getting the last hits with that bonus damage uh, and might keep the, the farm a little bit more in equilibrium between the two of them. And now to the off lane for Tong Fu. We've got LPC supporting on the Lich. Kabu here on the Centaur War Runner. Played a Nyx Assassin earlier on in the day, had LPC as his buddy for the most part, but did not work out for them. They're hoping to uh, hoping to make it work out this game, as Yao Love gets very, very low. So far he's 2-0, the three stacks of Napalm being a little bit annoying, and they're going to cycle off to the Nightmare twice, getting put to sleep. And It's never pleasant to have a Nightmare, but it's better than getting hit in the face by a Sacred Arrow. So, good cycling between the two of them, and when you do put two people into an off lane. It definitely limits the kill potential with that combo when they're together, as as we just saw. Perfect execution there, cycling off the Nightmare from Speed Gaming. But as it stands, it's an early 2-1 advantage and kills at 2 minutes for Tong Fu as the runes. Bounty Hunter gets the haste. Brewmaster will pick up the bounty to refill that bottle. But I don't think we're going to get much time to look at any of the other lanes because uh, we can pretty much see that it's going to be a slaughter fest down here in the bottom lane. Trying to pull the creep wave or just contest the pull, perhaps. Up top, looking at Kabu. 9 and 0 on his last hits. Pretty good. We got 14 and 14 on the cores, the Razor, and the uh, and the Void as another Nightmare goes out, but they can't find the arrow. And 
Nightmare is not a cheap spell. 165 mana. You get about two, maybe three of them if you have some mana regen in between, and that's about it. Melody lovers, though, are going to find the uh, the wrong side of a very sharp axe. Cobb will be able to bring him down. and Faceless Void, not in danger, but farm is yeah not even being slowed too much. He's doing a good job up here. Now that the Centaur is out of mana for the stomp, he's maybe not too worried about going down. Sure, Double Edge is, is pretty annoying, but at this point... If Cabo uses it, he risks just getting bashed and dying, as he's getting pretty low himself. Uh, close to his Tranquils, though. Well, he has them already. He's close in the sense that he either needs them delivered or needs to go to that side shop and get those out. Alright, looking at Jail Love now in some trouble. Firefly chasing him down. Four stacks of Napalm has already lapped. That's going to be more than 20 seconds on cooldown right now, and... He will fall, this duo offlane. It started out a little sketchy just because Bounty, unfortunately... Gave up the first blood, but as you can see, they're having no problem killing people and even getting a, a little bit of farm. Six last hits here for the bat, six for the bounty, and they will kill Xiao Love. Unfortunately, he wasn't on a killing spree yet, so they don't get the, the kill streak, but hey, they kill him at least. Uh oh, could be in some trouble. You do not have a frostblade, actually. 25 mana short, needs to go sacrifice something, and that's something I haven't really mentioned. The duo offlane with the lich is. Always pretty annoying because of what we're about to see here. He's going to probably take that new path. And he's going to deny one of these poor little souls. And that's obviously going to limit the experience of the Void. You can see Void at level 4. Stick to it. And let's check out... I guess we go to Morana to get the flip side. Morana, level 4, 190 points. But there's been a lot of kills there, so it's hard to get a direct comparison. To really get a feel for how much the sacrifice... Has affected and well clearly with him rotating towards the runes he hasn't quite been using sacrifice 100% so doesn't have full uptime on that uh, the third ability there for the lich it looks like we'll we'll get a go not a long pause thankfully here after the remake earlier that I think is what put us a little behind. Yeah, damage zapped away. He lands the clap, and it's pretty annoying. Three points, though. It takes a lot of damage very quickly. 42 taken away in just seconds. Melody's in some trouble. Gonna get stomped on double edge. Two more attacks. He needs to turn around, but he won't even have the time to turn around before Kabu can again bring down that very squishy Shadow Shaman. Which leaves Faceless Void to uh, trying to find this farm by himself. And still doing a pretty good job, but starting to fall behind his own teammate. Razor in the middle lane is... 29 last hits doing quite well and Zhao Love is almost shut down. This duo offlane, the bounty and the bat is pretty terrifying. The Shuriken toss damage is a lot of magic burst and Bat Raider is able to allow bounty to just chase and get Janata after Janata when it, as it comes off a cooldown every 12 seconds. And it will get more dangerous as, as more levels come. I wonder what he's going to do. Obviously, the last patch 6.81, there was a buff, Shadow Walk, you only need the one point in it really. Uh, for 100% uptime. So we'll see if he wants to just put full aggressive spells here. The Janata coming in. Uh, won't even be able to get in for the attack because there's a TP. Yeah, he saw the TP. He was backed away, but he was like, alright, maybe I can still sneak in the kill. And a little too much of an overextension there. He will fall as LPC TPs down to the lane. It allows red here for Tong Fu on the Bane to, to go ahead and get that kill. They do find themselves with a three kill advantage. I'm, I'm curious though, it's early for graphs, but I want to look at it anyways. And yeah, pretty topsy-turvy there, right about to equilibrium right now. And uh, Tong Fu now a little ahead in the experience as they lead by three kills and it looks like, uh, well, Speed Gaming might find another one here if they can get down Kabu as well, 15 HP, it looks like he might escape with that. Void's going to go in for the chase, does have the time lock, not dodging too much from the tower. As Brewmaster's going to appear behind, he will throw out the ultimate, the boulder smash onto Melody. Actually, I think the fire burn, no, the storm panda's got him. Looking for the tornado, needs the shadow walk that, already has actually. Uh, won't wind walk again, as apparently it's called wind walk. And they will get away. So the first primal split, it wasn't the best, but he at least netted a kill, and he needs to have got something from that, because he leaves the lane. Razor is basically free farming. They deposited a Lich to the middle lane to sort of soak up the experience, and Lich is doing pretty good. Obviously, he's got Sacrifice to give himself some extra experience, uh, but already going to be level 6 at maybe just past the 7-minute mark. 
That's pretty good. And he's got a sentry down. He knows what's coming. Throw the shuriken. He's got the vision as he steps uphill. And one more click. And they're not going to be able to get it. And Plasma Field was off or on cooldown. So not enough to squeeze it in as Brewmaster comes back, level 7. They know he doesn't have the primal split, so there's potential that maybe they'll try to gank, but Melody Lover's only level 3 on Shadow Shaman. He's hard-pressed to do much. He's more of a liability running into the big burst of Thunderclap and a crit. So he's got to be careful. Maybe just concentrate on, on stacking and pooling this, but obviously we see that Kabu is not scared. Uh, to go ahead and contest those pools as we will look to the bottom lane now. Zhao Love in some trouble. Stacks a Napalm mounting and he will fall. Trying to get away from the Bane. He's got a wand charge which would be enough for a, a brain sap which could kill the bat. So smartly, Bat Rider probably checked the inventory and he backs off and it's going to be LY or LWY who goes back in. Shuriken Toss. The wand is almost enough to keep him up. The, oh, there it is. The brain sap trying to make the plays and he won't go down. It forces the bounty to take a few too many tower hits. Well, not too many, but. He backs out a little uh, a little damaged for his trebles, and that's the power of the Bane. I don't think Bounty did check the inventory. Bat was smart enough to back off, but, you know, Bounty. Eyes on the prize as usual. Type of The type of mentality on that hero. I see someone in chat saying they dusted near a sentry. Yeah, I mean, as long as he's in Viz, though, the dust is still going to apply that slow. And will, of course, stay sticky on him as he gets out of sentry range. And it's a 15% slow. So, I, I mean, honestly, if you can get the kill, I think it's worth it. Because you're going to come out positive even if you bought, you know, the dust. Or even both of them, honestly. You're still going to be positive from that exchange. But here we go. Boulder Smash in the middle lane does not stop the static link. But it doesn't matter. They will be able to bring him down before he turns to attack. And there's a lot of damage here just from uh, the permanent immolation coming off of that fire panda. It's going to be enough to actually kill the bat. They get two here. Red onto a killing spree as he picks up one of them. It was Brewmaster UUU9 getting the first kill in that little exchange. It's two for nil. Six kill advantage for Tong Fu at nine minutes. And about, what is that, 1,300 gold? 1,600 experience change. Primal split used. And, well... Chain Frost. Chain Frost used as well, so two big ultimates uh, expended, but big kills as well. Getting their lead. Uh, gonna push it ahead now. Somewhat considerably. About 2k gold, 3k experience at 10 minutes. Not a bad place to be as Kabu is farming it pretty nicely. Brewmaster from the middle lane just picked up his Blink Dagger, and you can see already just about 300 gold away Kabu is from his. Tranquil Boots online already, so he's good to go, and it was apparent that Tong Fu wanted to dominate the early game, dominate the mid game, and try to get it over with before you get to the late game, because speed gaming have a big chance there uh, with their lineup. And of course the, the bounty as well. Not only the extra AoE and gold bounty if you're behind and looking to come back, but imagine putting a track into that mix as well. It's going to be an incredible amount of comeback available for speed gaming. So Tong Fu need to get it done, and speed gaming going to drop a two-man chrono. It's going to be Brewmaster taking a few tower hits. Drunken Brawler is, I believe, should be disabled in the Chrono. Oh, he was just taking the, the full tower hits. Hiding in the trees. They're safe. They're safe for now. There are four heroes here for Tong Fu, however. You gotta watch out for that. And this, uh, the agility, sort of semi-carry Razor. Treads, Aquila, we'll be looking for the mechanism, of course, pretty standard. We saw the Viper uh, doing that last game, again, standard, and here we go, Stampede in the top lane. Stomp onto, okay, yeah, they'll, they'll get him. Stomp onto the Void, and he goes down, it's Red, Red's like, yeah, dude, I got these KSs in the bag. I'm going carry Bane, guys. He's like, hey, team, did you hear about the changes to Aghanim Scepter? Like, let me get all the kills so I can buy one. The people want to see it. I think that's what he's saying right now to his team. I want to see it. it. Doesn't honestly seem very good. It seems cool. It doesn't seem very good. Because people know, right? Like, if Bane is in a Fiend script, I, I guess if you don't have a lot of good spells to cancel it, your your gut reaction is like, we need to attack him, focus him down quick. We need to get, you know, let's say Razor or Void out of the Fiend script. It's kind of cool because you would just nightmare everybody and team fight would literally be over. Be like having a Naga 
Uh, but, you know, you can only do that once, because then the other team's gonna know, like, alright, he's got a, he's got an Ag, so we can't focus him, you know, we'll just try to focus that one spell and, and cancel it out, so. Maybe if you get a BKB and an Ag's, it's worthwhile, but in what game are support banes getting a BKB and an Ag's in which they're not already dominating, so, I don't know. Same thing goes with a lot of the recent Ag changes, uh, along with Sven as well, but team fight breaking out, Melody Lovers will survive a second longer as he throws down... The warm embrace to the centaur, the shackles, it's its not enough to stay alive, and now leading by nine, possibly eight. <laughs> Did I mention I don't like to do simple math live? It's always dangerous. Doesn't matter how simple. It's not my strong suit. Once upon a time, I was good at, at differential equations, calculus 3, which was actually really easy. Calculus 2 was the hardest. Linear algebra and whatnot, but when it comes to simple math, no, I can't do it. It's not happening. Need a calculator. Fiend's grip, though, on the top lane. Arrow to connect. Yeah, it looks like it did land on the void through uh, their allied creeps there. 12-3 uh, to 3 now, another pickoff on that core hero. Switch to net worth. I don't know why I haven't already. Uh, that void not doing well. Pretty much the bottom of the pack in terms of core heroes. Just a little bit ahead of his own bounty hunter. Uh, so the void at 3,300 and looking at first place, it's the Marana, 5.6k. 5.5 for the brew. Um, well, yeah, Tong Fu sitting nicely on the net worth charts. Razor though still doing quite well, but again, another team fight out here in the middle lane. The streets of the middle lane, it's a rough place to grow up as Razor will be chopped down at the, the tender age of... How old is he? 11. <laughs> okay, that was dark. I'm sorry. The Chronosphere goes out. It's on to you, U9. There's not enough to kill him, though, and now the Moonlight Shadow comes through. Zhao Love throws that out. There's a big crit coming through the backside of the Bounty Hunter. He will fall, and he's tracked up so they can uh, keep eyes locked on Brewmaster as he uh, walks out into the Moonlight here as nighttime sets in at the 14 minutes. The Bounty Rune scooped already. Haste to spawn top. And, uh, Void doing the only thing he can right now, back to farming. He's not going to get anything done with treads and a poor man shield. He's going to need a little bit more. Alright. I don't know where I was going with the, the streets analogy, but... I think it went to a dark place. I apologize. I'm a little scarred by it myself. But here we go again. Razor, the only hero really doing well for speed gaming. So they're going to try to kill him as many times as possible. The lasso up is immediately stopped in his tracks by the Fiend's Grip. Batrider, the first to fall. Melody's going to be next. There's a good static link. 105 damage taken away here. Zhao Love, though, picks up a double kill as speed gaming lose three. And, you know, they don't do it unscathed. They're pretty low. They will back off as Razor throws out the Eye of the Storm and 105 damage zapped, but he takes an arrow to the face. Sacred arrow, well aimed there by Zhao Love. It's going to be Kabu to go down as he needs to double edge for the damage, but it's a pickoff. It's 4-4-1. Four, four, Kabu the only one to fall. 1-1. One one. Good job, team fight recap. <sighs> needs some tweaking and it'll be there. I know there are some console commands, but I don't think you can change the duration for which it gathers. Uh, I think you can only change how much it displays, which I have been meaning to mess with, but but haven't. I'm sure, uh, let's get it right here. I'm sure Chip Muckle has. He is one for fine-tuning his Dota broadcasting. And I gotta say, it's probably the best in the business. Bottom lane. We've got Kabu. Centaur War Runner. Melody's like, nope, 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 I'm out. I've died to that axe way too many times, and now he's got the Blink Dagger up. Of course, we've seen that uh, in effect for a while now. And even LPC on the Lich, almost up to the full mechanism. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, I love pushing out the bottom lane, looking to uh, take a tower. They've only got one so far, 16 minutes in, only one tower has fallen. Welcome to 6.82 if you haven't watched Dota in a while. Uh, you've got the Hand of Midas out here and the ultimate orb on the Zhao Love. I guess he's... Oh, excuse me. Could be a Manta first, just with the ultimate orb for the stats, but could also be for the Lincoln Sphere for this exact reason. 
You don't want to get lassoed by the bat rider, and that will be a track kill with four people around. That's going to be big. Not only are they going to get the AoE bonus for being pretty far behind, the fact that they get a track kill, that's a decent amount of gold, decent amount of XP for this point in the game before the 20 minute mark, but it's Razor to fall in the middle lane as well. The the two cores down for both teams. It will be Tong Fu taking out the middle tier one. And in the bottom lane, the Fortify goes out. The TP is to come in. The Chrono Sphere is available. Primal Split's going to go out. NT can just drop the Chrono. His teammates are a little caught in the traffic. Wind Panda will throw up the Void into the sky before he can really make his decision. Let's see what he's going to do. He'll go with the Time Walk first. And let's see. Red trying to chase. Does not have the Fiend's Grip. Has already used it. Razor, Shadow Shaman down here. Shadow Shaman deceased in the bottom lane. Razor died in mid before. And... They find the Void. I think that was not great decision making. Your Chronosphere, it's pretty important, but can you fight with it anyways? I think if he had dropped it immediately on the Brewlings and they and they dipped, uh, it could have been worthwhile. They could have maybe all escaped. Shadow Shaman could have been caught, but I don't know. Hard to make those decisions on the fly, but I would say I, I don't think the right one was made there by the Void as he does eventually fall. Uh, I guess trying to he was trying to TP out there as uh, NT... MZR going to be taking uh, that arrow to the face here. Positive earn charge coming out, but I think the attack, it's pretty decent right now. A little over 100. Oh, he's tracked up. Bottle charge given over and an earn charge, I think, to the bat. So he'll stay alive. No one going to go down yet, but now we've got Moonlight Shadow coming out. Looking to blink over. Do they have a gem yet? They don't. That was just a blind stomp. So that's going to make Speed Gaming think there might be a sentry posted up here somewhere, but there isn't. Be a little mind game will emerge from that. <laughs> Cinderin, stop flaming Chipmuckle. Gosh. I'm sure you're super serious, but... You're getting Twitch chat too excited. We don't want them too excited. Twenty-two to six, the score. Taking a look at the graphs. About eight, nine thousand gold advantage. Tongtus pushing. Ten thousand experience. Gold's probably getting pretty close to that as well. Do the math ourselves. Yeah, it's about 10,000 on the net worth difference. The mech will come out for the Razor, just similar to what happened with the Viper in the last game. I mean, without the little extra addition of some early towers going down and the extra tower gold, very hard to get the mech at that same sort of 12-minute timing that you were finding it in 6.81. Instead, he picked it up at 19. I think the Viper in the last game found it at like 18. Oh, a Chain Frost to the backside. Fire, meat, ice. It's ice to prevail right now as the Chain Frost brings him down or actually it's probably the brewmaster but anyways he'll catch up with melody and melody is pretty much paper right now and uh tong fu is a bonfire so yeah he just disappears Radiance middle tower has been denied the imagery was good that was good critiquing myself midcast solid analogy bottom lane fortify goes out the Razor trying to uh, bring down a tower here, but with the Fortify changes, they're of course going to just expend it and, and come to defend, and hey, when it falls, they'll have their Fortify back. If it falls in the next five minutes even, there's also a tier 1 top that hasn't even been touched. See, I knew, I knew Chip would know. I'm calling him Pimp still. I knew Pimp would know the, the console command just offhand. Fiend's Grip in the middle lane, that's onto the Bounty Hunter, he's level 9, and he's got a couple tracks off this game, but I don't think, I think re honestly just the one, and maybe a couple in the team fights that are harder to notice, but for the most part, it, I mean, we can look, it records the kills, two kills, four, four, about six kills before Speed got one, and then like another six before they get another one, and now there's like eight unanswered kills on the side of Tong Fu, like, game is, is gonna be hard for Speed, they get a little, huh, not even that greedy with their drafts, but trying to do the duo lanes, a Void and a, and a Shadow Shaman is not going to be able to do much against the Centaur and, and the, the Lich. The duo lane choice for Tong Fu is just so much better in the lanes as, oh, Melody Hex is a creep, and unfortunately for him, we notice it. Drop the Serpent Wards, though, and that will lead to the kill on Zhao Love, so all is not lost. Zhao Love got off the Moonlight Shadow, and Tong Fu, they're strong. They might be willing to fight without it. Or without the Marana, that is, but no. It's speed gaming, they back off quickly. Chain Frost was back up, they don't want to have anything to do with that, so they retreat back to base. Maybe to pick up some items, which, speaking of items, we'll check them out now. 
I'm going to keep it locked on Brewmaster while we do it. As people are fighting at the bottom rune. No arrow. Lucky for him. But there is a centaur here and it shouldn't be too much of an issue to bring him down. He wands up. That might be enough to keep him alive. The negative earn charge though. The stampede. They can't quite catch. They're even on speed. The neutrals. The ancients trying to get involved. But it'll be Bane. That'll get the kill. Items. Alright. Can someone? Can we stop fighting for a moment? We got the mech on LPC's Lich. Urn, as we saw just there. Red. Bane. Tong Fu. They've got it. Blink on Kabu since a long time ago. Blink on UU9's Brewmaster. And now an Aghanim Scepter at just 22 minutes. With 3,000 in the bank. This guy's on fire. Uh, and then we've got the defensive Lincolns. He did go for that with the ultimate orb. The Midas for Xiao Love. So... He's, he's taken care of. He's good to go. Let's find Purple. Purple trying to get some kills up here on the Bat Rider. For Speed Gaming, we'll start with him. He's up to the Blink Force Tranquil's Bottle. Pretty good to go. It's about all you need for Bat. Looking at the Void. He's got a Mask of Madness very far behind on this Void. 0, 3, and 1. There's another kill in the bottom lane. Ultimate goes out. Razor dies. Checking his items. Mech. Working for a BKB. Has an Ogre Club. And that's about it. Not a whole lot for him as well. There's an urn on the bounty, so I'm glad to see... There is literally no excuse to not have an urn in 6.82. If you don't have an urn on your team and you're in a pub and you're like, What item do I get? Get an urn. I don't really care what role you are, but it's especially as a support or an offlaner. Uh, there was honestly no excuse before, but really there there is no excuse now. And uh, finishing it off, supports with support items, does at least have the mana boots. No one's sitting on brown boots, so at least everyone is uh, moving along somewhat quickly. You might expect it from a team of speed gaming that they'd upgrade their boots early on, and I guess that's what we get here. Besides that, pretty much nothing going good for them. They uh, lose their first tier 2 tower, only 2 remaining. It is a, what is this? Three tower advantage right now. Tong Fu holding on to five still. Outer towers. All right. S and Y gotta go fast. I mean, as always. Tong Fu's Kabu picks up the S and Y, and I don't have a statsman, but I bet that item is not built very often on the Centaur War Runner. As we look over to Red, he's gonna get lassoed up, looking for the pickoff, but the Chain Frost will come in. It's gonna bounce once, and Bane will fall to the Serpent Wards, but you're using your Serpent Wards for the last two pickoffs, which means you're not gonna possibly get, be getting any tower kills. We can see how only the mid tower has fallen on the side of Tong Fu. Bot tower, a little low. There was a five man push down there for speed. And then things went south immediately afterwards. Yeah. I got the bounty. That's all I want to know. Brewmaster. He is the bounty quicker picker upper. I love it. That's the best catchphrase in Dota to date. According to me. Because I came up with it, I think. Dyer's top tower is under attack. All right, tower going down. Bottom tower. Top lane, Zhao Love getting that split push. Easy for him with the Lincolns. The Midas, another 2600 in the bank here. Fortify goes out on the bottom tier one, of course, and they come in to defend it. They want to keep this tower up. They could have went for the deny. They won't find it, though. Creeps will bring it down, but they will find the kill on the Razor. Easy Fiend's Grip arrow combo. It's 30 to 8. They lead by 22 kills. Only a tier 2 remains for Tong Fu to bring down. Shouldn't be much trouble. They do have the gem up now. Bane purchased it and handed it over to uh, LPC's Lich. As they like to just push the middle lane. You've got the Primal split up. You've got an Aghanims and uh, let's check. Is there anything on the Courier? I feel like Brewmaster has just finished an item, but I don't see it. He'll take the gem now. It stays, the aura stays with the uh, the Earth Panda, as I like to call it, the Wraith King Brewling. Got into a phase of just, I guess it's kind of left since he's not as popular, but just comparing every hero to uh, something something Wraith King. Like Sven is the blue Wraith King. The Earth Panda is the uh, the Wraith King Brewling. And that was about it. That was just two heroes. And that's about all the further I ever got. LPC working towards a force probably. Maybe a Necro to break high ground. I honestly... Don't think I've seen a Necro book in uh, 6.82. I think maybe I had a couple Lycan games still sneak through. His split pushing 
and tower pushing in the early game is still unrivaled. So, of course, he's going to come through every now and then. But uh, I don't think he's picked or banned in any of the games so far. So he's definitely fallen off considerably as the meta has already shifted. And people at least think they've discovered it. Seems reasonable, but of course we'll we'll see some more changes moving forward. Fiends grip out. They've got a sentry down. Easily done. Arrow looking for it. Will be denied the kill as UU9 is going to get it first. So it's one for one, I think, as the centaur falls uh, prior to that. 31 to 9 right now. The one kill, though, that trade is a lot better for speed gaming. Let's just make sure that's true. Uh, they probably got a lot more for the centaur, but that's not being recapped right now. So when you're behind, what is it now? 12,000 gold, 15,000 experience. A one-for-one -one trade is not really good for you whatsoever. doesn't matter who they kill, but especially if they take down a streak uh, or just a hero with high net worth, such as, well, either the Brew, the Marana, or the Centaur sitting in third. So that was a pretty big kill. A way back in for speed gaming, perhaps. But it's now Marana, Zhao Love, with the Desolator now just being delivered. So his damage output's gone up considerably. They're going to be able to push down the towers as they try to break the high ground. Arrow narrowly missing the side of the Faceless Void. Could have dodged the damage, but you will not dodge that stun if the arrow hits you. So they're going for the Roche. The Radiant team looking for the Roche pit. I honestly think this Roche pit is scarier than the previous one for either side. Like, there's so many angles that you can be attacked. And, like, you can leave someone out of the pit, but then they're still on the low ground. And you're like... Well, this is scary. So this is like the best place to leave someone if you're dire, and obviously over here if you're radiant, or even here. You gotta blink, just to sort of get some vision around the area, but it's tough. Batrider obviously one of the best, as he can sort of peer over the cliff. Uh, also, this new high cliff is here as well. Right? Oh, that's a, not a ward. Thought I switched my vision. Speaking of that, we'll look... Um, this is an interesting ward. Radiant structures are okay, that was maybe not a good drawing. Radiant I didn't mean to do that. But uh, that's sort of the vision that we're, we're given out there. Not a whole lot. It's just a sliver kind of keeping tabs. Like, you see, they, they now know that Razor is bottom. That's what that ward has done for them. So they know that if they find anyone top, they can go for the fight. And other than that, spotting out the runes. Now looking at Dire Vision, same thing here. The top rune, that's about all they got. And a fairly aggressive ward. Keeping tabs on, I guess, jungle farming. It's pretty dangerous for them to go out that far, but maybe if they smoke, they see a couple people there, they can find them and, and get the pick off. Game slows down a bit, as is pretty much the custom these days. You're far ahead, you don't want to give up those kills, so people taking their time, being very careful. Getting into the base, and once again, Tong Fu is going to rob that Marana of the kill. He's up to 1,800 gold right now. Please go Ags. I just want to see it. It doesn't matter if it makes sense. He's probably going to go Blink, but... Let's go Ags instead. That's the big problem, right? He needs a Blink, too. And we already talked about you kind of need a BKB to make the Ags really worth it. That's so much farm for a Bane. Unless he's in a core position, which probably never will be, but you never know. We see Lina going core in the mid lane these days. At least one game of Virtus Pro. And it worked out really well. Wasn't quite enough, but still good. Roche. Got the Aegis for one, two, three more minutes. So they want to use that. They did throw the Aegis over to the Marana right now. Got a Crystallis. Gonna help with hitting heroes. Not so much pushing, but the Desolator is there for the push. At least when they get to the towers. Which is taking them a while to do. Decent high ground defense. Look at the void now. He's starting to come online. The Mask of Madness Maelstrom is going to be enough to at least kill most people. Um, Lincoln's Fear on the Marana won't help against that. So she's honestly kind of susceptible to that. And he's going for the Ag Scepter. He's a little more than halfway there if he wants to purchase up. But he's got the point booster for now. As Speed Gaming will move out of the base. They're not smoked up. They're not really doing much. And Centaur will ult randomly. Pause. They see them? I don't know, they get pinged out. I don't see a Radiant Ward there, but they definitely know. Oh, wait. There it goes. Yeah, I don't know. They, they ping him out. I don't know what caught wind of that. Maybe the Creep Wave kind of saw them walking this way. That, that must be what it was. Because that was a ping directly on top of them. Or maybe that was... It was either, I guess, brown or orange. 
Looked like ping that out. I, I swear it was Zhao Love saying, I think they're there. Be careful, guys. Light us off a cooldown. Age is still in his inventory. Did they see anyone? Just in the... No, they didn't even see them in the bottom lane. Everyone's missing if you're SPG. They've got no vision on anybody. So the smoke gank is... It's a... Not an informed smoke gank if that's what they're grouping up for here. I don't think it is. Just trying to find some farm from the jungle and... Well, quick inventory check. Yeah, no smoke. So they weren't grouping up to, to roll out so they don't all die and keep getting picked off, which is pretty much been the story of the game thus far. Kung Fu, as you can see, leading 32 to 9 here in the Summit 2. The Chinese qualifiers and, of course, all the qualifiers and, well, the tournament in general will be brought to you by G2A.com, so make sure to check that out. Might as well check it out now, as there's a bit of a downtime, people just farming up, maintaining the lanes, doing Dota things. Trying to break into this high ground safely. Brewmaster's going to go forward, throwing out a primal split once more just to bring down a support who will respawn in 40 seconds. No buyback on him, so maybe that's the window here as we do see the Tong Fu flying down the middle lane. Oh, no, a bit of a detour. Zhao loves like, I like farming. I love farming. I know Zhao means little, but maybe, maybe it means farming too. Zhao love. Farming love. Radiant's top tower is under attack. They find anyone that's bounty. They do have that gem up, of course, and it's on the brew here. He's finished Boots of Travel as well as he jumps in on to the bounty. They bring him down in the middle lane. and Well, the Shadow Shaman's up. He can use his rank 2 Serpent Wards to defend, and that won't be the easiest thing to push into. But having picked off the bounty, they might have to worry about giving up their own AoE and golds or experience bounty, but at least there won't be a track as well. The Fortify goes out. They're focusing on the Tier 3. Brewmaster to tank it. He does have Drunken Brawler. Arrow connected. It lands on the Razor. He's far back by the Tier 4s, though. They don't want to dive that deep. They just need to focus the buildings. That's it. And let's not forget the Aegis is here. So, oh, Batrider's going to find somebody. He's dragging forward. Kabu, can they bring him down? They bring him into the Ward Trap. And here goes forward. The Void dropping the Chrono. Finds two. But the Chain Frost brings him down. Kabu still alive. He does... Managed to get off the stampede. TP's now coming in. Xiao Love somewhat low, but he's got the Aegis for a little while longer. We'll continue to fight. Here he tries to leap, and he does fall. Probably should have just not leapt in the first place. Let's see if his team tries to help him out. There he is, respawning. Ten seconds on the leap now. Void jumping forward. And that is uh, a buyback for the Void here, and he will get a kill. And speed gaming. Well, this is the start of a comeback for sure. Look at the gold changes. Not much because of the buyback, but XP about 3k in their favor as they only lose the tier three and this is the hard part of 6.82 actually breaking into the high ground and doing it cleanly so difficult and lineups that are maybe a little greedy like speed gamings that can turtle well they're terrifying i don't think it'll be too big of a dip on gold xp maybe it goes down to like 12 or 10k advantage tong fu still very far ahead a couple more wipes uh, before speed gaming is back to a level footing, but showing that they're capable of doing so, and that was with an Aegis. Which, uh, we'll check in with the Razor. After that speed gaming, probably able to complete some items. Razor's got the uh, BKB he was going for with that Ogre Club earlier. So that's finished up upon the mech. And he's got a plate mail. Could be an AC. Pretty common. Uh, helps with the pushing and the armor reduction. And his ultimates also reducing armor. Not of uh, towers yet, just because he doesn't have that Ag Scepter. So his, his push is limited, but they're really just worried about the team fight. So if he can finish the AC... Armor reduction in an AoE will be great, along with his Eye of the Storm on whoever it targets. Uh, makes Void, his damage output is going to be increased by that, that's for sure. As he is going for the Ags, we've already determined that. He's getting close, about 700 gold away, and no reason to save for buyback because he already used it, and it's 4 minutes on cooldown right now. Centaur as well. We'll finish the BKB after his SNY. A strange choice of items that can be disassembled to quickly make a, a Heaven's Halberd and then just have a Yasha left over. Uh, but we'll see what what he wants to do with that. As All right, the Crystallis was out earlier. Now the Daedalus coming up. Daedalus, Desolator, Lincoln's, Phase, Midas. That's where Zhao Love stands. He is deadly right now. 
pair of BKBs. Let's see. Uh, the 10 second charge has been used for the brew. And it was obviously just picked up. So still available for Kabu. Other big items emerging at this point in the game. Not much. Four staff for Melody Lovers. Still not going to be enough to really save his life if he's focused. But maybe keep him alive a little bit longer. And maybe long enough for someone else on Speed Gaming to make a sick play. Well, and also, it's a great defensive item in general. You got the double four staff potential for the lasso pullback. First Bat Rider, then the Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman also can just try to save a teammate with a force. Which is why it is such a good item, but most of the time we see people just using it on themselves. That's not a fair statement. I don't know. Ignore that. Radiance top tower is under attack. Alright, trying to push once more into the middle lane here. This time, without the Aegis. The BKB forced out here. That's the 9 second charge for Razor. Serpent Warns dropped. It's pretty far back behind the range, so melee barracks open for business if they want to go for it. Batrider jumps in, forces out. Won't be able to get the kill there. Stampede goes out. The Brueling ultimate by the tier 4s right now. Looking for the Chrono, but he gets Fiends gripped! And the Chain Frost into the face. He will fall immediately. No buyback available right now. Centaur has also fallen, but without the threat, of a Chrono, I don't think Speed have any chance of taking a team fight here right now. So, melee barracks, yep, looks like they will fall. Xiao Love bringing them down pretty quickly as U9 gets some more kills. He will bring down the bounty on the backside of this fight. Or the backside of the high ground breach, more like it. They get it. They won't swing top or bottom. They've lost the centaur. They want to get out cleanly and. Oh, maybe not. Still kind of sticking around, just going back to greet with the creeps as. Batrider, nightmared up, looking for the toggle. It's going to be uh, Brewmaster to jump in and actually take that off. Arrow was there, but didn't decide to use it. 38 13, 38 minutes, just under it, in the middle racks. Finally, have fallen. It looks like Tong Fu probably have secured the victory this game, but there's still potential. If the Faceless Void isn't picked off immediately, they can win a team fight on the side of Speed Gaming. It still won't be easy, but potentially. 15,000 behind now, a golden experience. There's the four staff, he's got it, won't even decide to use it. BKB's up so he doesn't get shackled, and possibly killed by the Razor in the back coming through, but it's gonna get uh, pulled back by the lasso anyway through that magic immunity. Has the split in about 20 seconds, Chain Frost will go off. Lots of damage being taken away, 168 over to the Razor right now. The Chain Frost still bouncing though, it'll be Centaur to chop down the Bat Rider. And uh, let's see. We'll dodge the arrow and get back to base. Green not going to be so lucky. That's uh, that's the bounty hunter. He will fall. That gem has been present for a long time over there on the Brewmaster. They haven't dropped it once this game. Well, besides the switch inventories, I guess. But 41 and 13 the score. So we basically just wait for Tog Fu to, to, to roll into the base and finish the game out. Oh, another gem. How nice. MZR gonna drop one over to uh, LPC. So not only does Tong Fu have one gem, they got two gems. Roshan, second Rosh of the game. They're going for it. The Radiant have taken both. Just shows you how dominant Tong Fu has been and well, how possible these early to mid game lineups still are. And we do see them struggling a bit to break the high ground, as is honestly pretty standard these days. Uh, pushing lineup. This is a good early to mid game lineup in terms of the team fight, but it's not great in terms of actually being able to break the high ground as the courier will go down. 600 on it. It was a Shiva's Guard recipe and a town portal scroll, so I guess it was Shiva's Guard that the Razor was going towards, or no, that might have been for Bat. I think Razor wants the AC. Did he actually finish it yet? No, he, he hasn't finished it quite yet. Still with the plate mail. Got maybe the gold for it. Uh, Bat Rider. I guess it bought up the Shivas before dying at one point. I think Razor was maybe the one sending it out there. But here's the Chrono. They're trying to focus Kabu, and I don't think they're going to be able to. The wards are inside the Chrono right now. There's the Fiend's Grip. He will be dropped out of it. Now the Chain Frost bouncing through the fray of this team fight. It's going to be enough. It will stop bouncing on the bounty. And okay, they bring down the Podum, but he's going to be respawning in just about a second. Let's see if they can still focus him. He's got the leap up. He jumps out of the base. Brueling still doing a lot of damage here, and it's going to be Xiao Love to get the last hit on the Razor. He's got buyback, but won't even care to use it. As they will call it the GG. It's a full five man wipe, and well, that's what you're capable of when you're 15,000 ahead. Make it about 30 now, as finally the throne will explode here. 
And uh, what is, what, the fifth game so far of this day? Of course, we've only been around for one and a half, make it two and a half games now. But hopefully you guys are enjoying the casting here. For the Summit 2 qualifiers brought to you by G2A.com. Make sure to check them out, 100TB as well. And uh, as always, shout out to Beyond the Summit for having me on. I'm Helium. You can see it in the upper right-hand corner there, at Umbrella, Twitter and Twitch. Let me know what you thought. Give me a follow if you liked it. And that was Tong Fu Speed Gaming. Congrats to Tong Fu. Up next, we've got DK versus LGDC deck. So do stick around here as the action continues. <laughs>